Coming up today on Mass Appeal, we have the perfect on-the-go breakfast for you and your kids with these delicious monkeys in a blanket banana roll-ups. Plus, we're exploring the process of undergoing cataract surgery and whether it's the right decision to clear up your vision. And we have tricks and games you can play with a new dog to help you bond with your new best bud. Mass Appeal starts right now. From the 22 News Studios, this is Mass Appeal, the local show all about you and our area. Here are your hosts, Alana Flood and Danny New. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mass Appeal. My name is Danny New. And my name is Alana Flood. No way. It is. Is that new? Nice to meet you. Oh, hey, Danny. Charmed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if you are meeting someone, we have two really good cooking ideas. We do. We do delicious ones with one of our favorite chefs. Yes. We Kathy have many Kappa. favorite chefs. but yeah, Kathy... Everyone's our favorite chef. Yes. But she is a favorite chef who's been on the show for many years. So she's got great ideas. She's reached her, her gold card for yes, being on the show has. more than four years. Um, we also have Rob Robinson on today who's been coming on more than that. So another gold star member. That's right. Maspiel. We're also doing dog training tips. And we have the cutest dog yeah. in the studio. Everybody walked in and was like, Oh. Right, we all made the most simultaneously. Disgusting right, we were all just. I, <laughs> yeah, his name's Jack. He's a little. I, I feel like sometimes when you and I are talking, it's kind of like, and when Harry met Sally, with the two old couples describing what happened when they first met. Like you and I are like sitting here and like there was a dog, and then you're like it was a wiener dog, and then I'm like <laughs> it was really cute, and then we're like you're just like tag teaming, telling the story of a dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, but are you a wiener dog person? Um, <laughs> I like all dogs. Should I stop calling them that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you I think like dash hound is the proper terminology. Well, okay, honestly, I've I used to call them hot dog dogs. Hot dog dog is good right? too. Yeah. I've been avoiding it because I never knew if it was doshhound uh, yeah. or dog hound. It's it's hard. Exactly. I, I think dosh hound. I don't know. But See, you I'm know saying, what? Somebody's so. going to correct me, and I welcome Someone the correction will email us. because I don't know. We welcome it. And in the meantime, let's go to the kitchen. Yeah. We are making a giant salad bar with Kathy Kappa now. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a fast dinner solution, but your family doesn't like the same things, why not let them design their own salads? Kathy Kappa, owner of Auntie Kathy's Kitchen, is back with some inspiration for a family-style salad bar. What's up, Kathy? How you doing? The only thing I care about is whatever this plate of cheese is, because it looks like crispy cheese. Cheese on. Cheese on. What do you mean, cheese on? Cheese on. With cheese on what? Cheese on anything. Oh, That's well. my type of yeah. thinking That's right my there. Credo, you know what's so. funny? Because it's basically all it is is fried cheese in a pan on the top of the stove, which, you know, um, I think you, we could really do any kind of cheese, but today we're going to do this beautiful smoked provolone that we have here. And I'm going to show you how to do that after. And But for right now, what yeah, we're going to do is we, we are going to talk about a lot of people ask me about salads. And... So I thought for a real easy dinner, if you've got company coming and you've got a lot of little things in your refrigerator and your cabinets, a really great idea is to make a salad bar. And I think a long time ago when I was on here with you, we did a taco bar. So if you do a taco bar why, and any other kind of bar, why can't you do a salad bar at home on your island and people can come up. And the other, uh, I think I saw this somewhere. I was in New York and they had like a shop like that where you go in and you pick your lettuce and then you pick your toppings and then they put it all in a bowl and mix it up. So it's kind of the same thing where you would just do it right uh -huh. in your home. Well, break this down for us. What are some of the things you, know, you might not usually find or you think it's just a good idea for a salad people often forget? I think what uh, this is is basically really good ideas for things that people don't even know, like watermelon or pineapple or mandarin oranges, which actually all three would go really good on one of your salads, maybe even with a little toasted coconut, something something like that, uh, like um, ambrosia type oh. salad. And then we have some other things like your regular suspects, like cucumbers and carrots and grape tomatoes, but make it one step up and add a little fresh basil and some roasted red peppers. And if you've got some mozzarella cheese, you can sprinkle that on. I see goat cheese out there. Yeah, we have, and then again, you've got all your cheeses. You've got your gorgonzola, you've got feta, and you've got uh, goat. And I think you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier where you had a salad. We've got some bacon yes. bits, we've got some nuts. So why, while 
I'm standing here with my cheese, which I'm going to go to next. Maybe you guys can start. There's your, and then you got your lettuce, your butter lettuce, your spinach. So you could do a spinach salad, and you've got mixed greens. So maybe while I'm talking about the cheese, why don't you guys maybe create a few salads? Create a few salads for everybody good. at home, and then we can just lift up the tray. But cheese, which you can also put on your salad. Maybe you can fill this with some basil and tomato. So pretty. And um, basically, again, it's cheese on, and I think that's some made-up name somewhere. I actually saw it in a recipe book, and it was called really? Cheese On. And the recipe was for a CLT, which was toasted cheese, lettuce, tomato, and mayo instead of a BLT. So to start with, you're going to take a pan, just like you were making some bacon at home, you're going to turn it on, and you, if you have a Teflon pan, you are not going to need to grease it because the fat coming out of the cheese will be more than enough for it. And if you just have a regular pan, you can just spray it with a little cooking spray. But all you're going to do is put your cheese in the pan. And then you're going to grab my toast I certainly out am. of the oven, and we're going to watch this cheese turn into something really nice in very few moments. So and is it something about provolone? Because I would think cheese would melt and become liquidy. You can use, I would suggest using something that might be a little bit of a firmer cheese. Like you don't want to obviously use a goat cheese or like you want to use something like a shredded Parmesan or um, like a Asiago, you know those big, like something like that. And actually, big Asiago people the, the Asiago thing. cheese, if you do it with a sprinkled Cheddar, uh, shredded cheese, it's actually going to have a little bit of a lacy look to it. So, I and love when that. you take it out of the pan, remember what we were trying to do earlier was we were going to make a small bowl out of it. And then what you can do is just take your cheese, flip it over onto an inverted bowl or a glass, and the cheese will actually fold down over your bowl or glass. And when it hardens, you have a really cool looking little bowl, and then you could even make your salad. In that, so in a cheese bowl. In a cheese bowl. Now, a how is that like? Bowl. Forget the burrito bowl salad or the taco mm, bowl salad. Bowl soup. You want a cheese, and again, here you go. You just flip your cheese right over, and there you go. So now, what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm just going to throw another piece in here, and I'm going to heat up a couple of these, and we're going to take this toast, and again, very simple. We're just going to take some mayonnaise. And um, we're going to just go like this and like this. You know it's a Kathy sandwich because it's very thick bread. Kathy yep, likes. I like my bread sliced really thick. And then we've got a little lettuce, little tomato, and a little onion. I love onion. And, and you don't have to onion? put onion on. I do, I like you onion. You can even put on, and this you could also add, which I think would be absolutely amazing, is avocado. That's and a great idea. And then you're going to take your fried cheese. And you're gonna oh. put it right on there. And if you're really <laughs> crazy three. enough, and you All want to, three. and if you really are crazy enough, you could totally add bacon. But we're gonna push that down, this and veggie. this is gonna this is gonna crunch on me because it's a little bit over toasted. No such thing. But that's all right. So there you go. You got your your CLT. You've got your cheese crisps, and you've got all your ingredients to make a lovely salad for your salad bar dinner at home. Kathy, it's perfect. You do miracles with the simplest things. That's I know the, that's it's a little it so crazy, good. but again, it's just no, fun. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> There's nothing crazy, crazy about it's a good cheese bowl. It's good crazy. No, cheese, bowl. <laughs> cheese bowls are not crazy. They're brilliant. <laughs> you guys can try home any time of year. Make a CLT with cheese on. Yeah. Coming up at Mass Peel, everybody, Dr. Rob Robinson is back in studio to break down the pillars of happiness that we can include in our lives. Plus, one thing that makes me happy. Are most people happy? It's children. If you're having trouble expanding your family, we have an expert here to talk about overcoming infertility. That's going right here on Mass Bill.
Partridge family used to just tell us to come on, get happy. But it's not always that easy, at least without David Cassidy here. Here to break down these six <laughs> pathways to happiness is Dr. Rob Robinson. Hello, sir. Hey, great to be back. Great to see you. What a positive dude you are. Well, thanks, Rob. I guess I'm good then. I'll see you guys later. Rob said I'm happy. That's all we need to know. Yeah, that was a quick segment. Fastest segment I've ever had here. <laughs> Uh, so how are we breaking down happiness? How is that possible? Uh, what a cool topic, right? So, so probably a little over 15 years ago, uh, some leading experts in psychology got together on the Yucatan Peninsula to answer the question, what makes people happy? So out of that question, this entire field of positive psychology was born. And for the last 15 years, this, this whole science of, of, of happiness, actually, has unfolded in such a way that all of the recommendations that they make to improve people's lives are not just theoretical. They're actually science-based and research-proven research and empirically tested to demonstrate that they can really, indeed, make people's lives happy. So today, we're just going to talk about some of the pillars of that uh, and what they found in asking that question, what makes people happy in life? So the first one is positive emotion. Yes. That's a hard thing to control. Interesting thing, right? It's, it, but but it, there are intentional things that you can do. Now, 50% of that equation is actually related to genetics. And if you look at the population on a bell curve, more than half the population is kind of wired to think more negatively. And they think that's probably a survival piece because you're, if you're aware of what's dangerous and lurking in the bushes, you can prepare yourself for... Wow, that's a, how a positive person tried to spin yes. negativity. Yes, yes. So positive emotion is obviously an important thing, right? So they teach, they, 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 they teach you how to think more positively through acts of kindness or teaching how to think optimistically. The science of optimism changes people's lives in improving their immune system, helping them live seven or eight years longer than pessimists, uh, how to savor the present moment, how to practice forgiveness, how to practice gratitude. All of those are designed to increase the amount of positive emotion, which obviously then informs your physical well-being and your mental well-being. Now, I'm going to start coupling these up because we're going to I know. We're going to run out of time. time. Uh, number two is engagement. Number three is positive relationships. Yes. I like, number four is meaning. I want to yes. get some meaning. So one of the one of the one of the foundational pieces that they discovered is that people are much happier when they're engaged doing something that they find deep purpose in. So it could be anything that you're doing. If you feel there's a sense of purpose attached to that, and it gives your life meaning then that will absolutely contribute to people having a sense of inner, inner peace and, and happiness. So it, th they encourage people to use what they call signature strengths, your signature strengths, your gifts, and try to deploy those in what you do in life. And usually when those are being deployed, you feel a sense of purpose. And that would tie into number five, which is accomplishment. Yes. I think it's important to feel like you were on this earth for some reason. Absolutely. And, you know, this, is a, this stuff is really important, especially for, like, businesses and, and teachers and people who work with other people, that, you know, in, in using encouragement to help people establish a sense of their own accomplishment in their work, in their schoolwork, in their families, in their homes is essential in helping develop positive emotion and a, and a positive well-being. Yeah, I think there's that Ralph Waldo Emerson quote where he said, to know that anyone breathed a little easier because of you means that you were a success. Absolutely. You yeah. made your mark. As, 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 what's his name? Steve Jobs would say you made your dent in the universe. I think Ralph Waldo Emerson's a little better than Steve Jobs. <laughs> I, as far as uh, I agree. transcendental thinking exactly. goes. No, they're both good. Uh, number six is health. We've health. Got 25 seconds left, but if you want to touch I mean, on health. Health is the obvious piece, right? So, so there, it's essential that people really have mindfulness about taking care of themselves and keeping their bodies healthy, obviously, because health and the mind and body are intimately connected. So well-being informs your physical well-being and physical well-being informs your mental well-being. All of these can be separate topics as we go down the road in the future. We'll talk more about these things. It's a great way to end a segment. Why not? Thanks, Rob. Right? Hey, great to see you. We should have Rob host a show on day. Maybe the happiest <laughs> show on earth. Well, we tips you guys on the website, all six. Happiness tips on our website, mymasspeel.com.
be a challenge for some to get pregnant. Here to talk to us about how to change your frame of mind and triple your chances of pregnancy is author and fertility expert Saskia Roel. Saskia, how did you become a fertility expert? Well, at first, I'm a mother of five. Usually, people think that I've gone through the whole fertility journey, like I couldn't get pregnant. I got pregnant very quickly, and I had five kids, and I love being a mom so much that I believe that any woman who longs to become a mother deserves to hold a baby in her arms. That's beautiful. Yeah. Some people do have problems getting pregnant and you have some tips on ways that women can increase their chances. Yeah. How do they yeah. start? You know, the thing is on the fertility journey, women try to be positive, but underneath there is so much negative self-talk. They tell me, they think, what if I'm too old? Or what if I miscarry again? Or what if my baby isn't healthy? And I learn them how to reprogram their mind so they can reprogram their body and conceive because fear, these fearful thoughts, these negative fearful thoughts, they impact the body and they change the neural pathways in the brain and what is so interesting, what a lot of people don't know, is that body-mind work, when women do body-mind work, it more than doubles their chances to conceive. So I teach them to go from negative self-talk, for example, like, what if I'm too old? What if I'm the perfect age to conceive? Or what if I miscarry again? Into what if I trust the innate wisdom of my body? So it gets to positive self-talk, and that paves the path to conception. You mentioned body-mind work. What does that mean? Body-mind work is that, like I said, fear changes the neurological pathway of the brain. And when you keep having all these fearful thoughts, your body listens. So you want to reset your thinking. If you think about 60,000 thoughts we have a day. Certainly. And 80% are negative. You know, you want to reset that. But um, another thing that a lot of women do on the fertility journey is they go in over perfection. They have a very regiment schedule for eating, for sleeping, for love making, for exercise. And I want them to loosen up. That's stressful. Right? Alone. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to keep everything on track and yeah. eating right and oh I have to get to sleep and that's, absolutely no, no joy in that and this there is, is no to be a joy. joyful experience right you know absolutely and get your husband off pregnant duty because that <laughs> doesn't work so i tell them you know sleep in one time and skip the exercise or go out when you have dinner and have that glass of wine because you know that's what i call the 80 20 rule loosen up because it it, it makes you get pregnant faster to do less have more fun and um yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. So the 80-20 rule is to have, to be re responsible 80% of the time yeah. and yeah, then yeah, have yeah, fun 20% yeah. of the time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is where I say do less, there's one thing they can do more. And that is to rekindle the relationship with their body. Because what happens? They've been disappointed so many times. And they get into this love-hate relationship with their body. And they say to their womb, like, you know, a client of mine said, I relate to my womb like an annoying neighbor. Well, babies don't want to come to the annoying neighbor. They want to come to you. So I help them that they start to feel more feminine and more fertile and get more emotional stable and in their bodies. So that little baby on their soul you know, can make a nice warm home in oh, their body. Uh, that's exactly. Time to reset your mind, yes. enjoy yourself. Saskia, thank you so much for these yeah. great tips. Don't forget, if you'd like to see this story again, visit our website, mymassappeal.com. Coming up next on Mass Appeal, we've got good news for your eyes. The most common form of vision loss is surprisingly treatable. Hear all about it when we return. Plus. We're back in the kitchen with Kathy Kappa. You'll go bananas over the healthy snack we're making next. Mass Appeal, we'll be right back.
are the leading cause of vision loss in the United States, but it's a condition that's easily treatable and nothing to be scared about. Here with some advice is Dr. Thomasina Sedaris. Thomasina, what exactly is a cataract? Sure, um, I can show you because it'll make more sense. Okay. So in our eyeball, we have a lens and the lens is what focuses so we can see, so light can get to the back of the eye. A cataract is a clouding of the lens. So the clouding is located right behind the cornea. Can you tell if you have cataracts by looking at somebody's eye? Like, could I tell? It would have to be really advanced for you to be able to see it in someone. Um, it tends to be a very slow, gradual process for the formation of a cataract, unless you have a traumatic cataract, uh, which can occur from an injury. Uh, that those tend to be more, more visible depending on the extent of the cataract. How do you know if you have one or so have them? Is have, what's, the, what's the correct way to pronounce that? Yeah, it, it can be in one eye, it can be in both oh. eyes. Yeah, so if you start to feel your vision is blurring, just not as clear, not as sharp, halos around lights at night, uh, colors seem more faded, that could be an indicator. Uh, I definitely recommend having your eyes checked regularly by your, by your eye doctor because that's when it can be detected. What else can people do to prevent them? Sure, um, wearing sun protection is key because of the, the harmful effects of the UV rays from the sun. Sunglasses will help um, reduce that to, to, to protect the front of the eye, protect cataract formation. So that would be one thing is sun protection. Um, another thing is if you're a smoker, that does contribute to cataract formation earlier. So look at you know decreasing smoking, quitting smoking. Um, just protecting your eyes if you're out working you know, in the yard um, to prevent injury that would cause cataracts. And general diet, you know, being healthy, those, those aspects help with everything, of course. So. Does everybody get cataracts? Are they inevitable? Yes, it's like getting a wrinkle or getting a gray hair. <laughs> We'd like to pretend, you know, but uh, yes, it does, it does happen over time. Gradual for some people more so than others. Um, yeah, and you, you'll, you can tell because things just aren't going to be as clear or not quite as sharp as you'd like them to be. How, do, how is it treated? Sure, so um, cataracts are treated with surgery. And it's a very quick, simple procedure, 15, 20 minutes in office. And what the surgeon would do is just make a tiny, tiny, tiny little incision, actually go into the eye and break up the cloudy cataract and replace it with an artificial implant. Really? Yeah, so the results are, are instant. That's amazing, and it takes only a short 10 to 15 mis minute visit? Correct, so yes, so the procedure is 15, 20 minutes, but they'll keep you at the hospital for a little bit just to make sure you're feeling okay. Any downtime? Do people have to you know, wear sunglasses or compresses or anything like that? Or are they pretty much ready to go? Yeah, it's, um, it is, I mean, it's still a surgery, so you're gonna have like a little healing time, but Basically, you don't want to lift anything heavy for a couple of days. You're going to be on eye drops for a couple of weeks. Probably no bungee jumping, you know, the first few days type of thing. But uh, it's, yeah, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, I know somebody who had, has already had cataract surgery, an older person, and their, their vision went back to like 2020 after. Exactly. Because what can happen is, uh, say if somebody has a really thick prescription, when you see your surgeon, they're going to do calculations based off of the curve of your eye, the length of your eye. So when they put that implant in, it can have your prescription. So some people still may need glasses afterwards, you know, real mild or for, or for reading. But overall, patients have said that it feels miraculous to have their eyesight back. That's amazing. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Thomasina. My pleasure. Don't forget to see more of this story. Visit our website, mymassappeal.com. Stay tuned. You're going to get to find out how delicious a monkey in a blanket is. Coming up next.
We are monkeying around in the kitchen today with Kathy Kappa, owner of Auntie Kathy's Kitchen. She's going to show us some fast meal and snack ideas for families on the go, including these monkeys in a blanket. It's usually pigs in a blanket. It's yeah. Not today. Not today. We're not doing pegs. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know who would have liked this a lot? Elvis would have liked this a lot. Yeah, He's this really is big good. And, and the thing, this is another one of these really quick, fast, like, again, this, I think today was like the short order kitchen day because the, I think that, you know, sometimes there's, you need a snack, you want something good, but you're tired of the same old thing. So this recipe, which can be made, again, another one of these things that can be made so many different ways, um, that's easy, good, and everybody will like it, not just kids. I think it's absolutely amazing. So it's for your little monkeys. When your kids are little monkeys and they're hungry. There's monkeys. You give them it, when there's monkeys in your kitchen and they're hungry, this is exactly what you it's would perfect. Feed them. And it seems a little hearty too. Like it would, would satisfy you. It is, it is, because there's a banana which has um, I don't know, you know, they say bananas are good for you because there's potassium, there is a little sugar and there's some fat. And then you've got some nice whole wheat bread and honey and cinnamon. And I actually have real butter here because I think real butter would go great with this recipe. But you can again make this dairy free and use a dairy-free alternative. Um, another thing that you could do when you're rolling these is you could put a little peanut butter on the bread. You could do almond butter. You can do a little Nutella. You can, uh -oh. yeah, like the possibilities are endless with this thing. And it, so again, it's another one of these clean out the cabinets, use whatever you have to make a snack in the house instead of having to go somewhere and buy something, Alana, which I'm so into. Do we have Nutella in the office? We don't. Oh. You got to get some. I know. Yeah. That yeah. should be an office staple. Yeah, we need to have you need, you need, Everybody oh, wants yeah. Nutella all the time. So what, I, what I've done here is I've just laid out a piece of foil on the counter. You can use a cutting board or whatever, and I have a rolling pin. And I've got some whole wheat bread that was um, actually a little good tip here. Mine was actually a little bit on the dry side, so I just toasted it a little bit so it's a little bit more rubbery because what we're actually going to do now is we're going to take a rolling pin a rolling and pin. we're going to roll the bread out just a little bit. We're going to flatten it out and this is going to be our blanket. So again and if you have if you have a I guess I could say like sometimes you get a bread from the store that might be a little bit gluier I think if you know what I mean by that yes. and um, it's a lot very fresh you'll be able to roll these out just a little bit farther and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife well let's do this we'll roll them all out roll them all out and um, are you again, always going to go diagonally like that I do I tend to because you can either go like this but you're going to you can do long way you can do this way you can do any way you can roll any way you want to and again this is not like your average household rolling pin I think this is like a bakery it's like a French yeah, that's style a good one. yeah these are good yeah. because you know then if <laughs> if the monkeys are getting in the way you just kind of <laughs> whack them whack them with the rolling pin no. <laughs> or not yeah. or not, or not. No. brandish it though yeah you can you can look threatening with okay. your rolling pin so a little better a little better and um so then what you're going to do is you're going to take your flattened bread so you're just going to lay them out and I usually use a half a banana because I think that that would be um, it would cover it a little better. You could use a whole banana. It'll just stick out a little bit on the ends. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my melted butter. Yes, I've been waiting for the melted and butter. And then we're just going to brush it on huh. here. Huh. And again, this is another, if it's really warm, you can do this in a microwave if you want, just melt your butter. And this is another one of these things where, again, anything goes. I've got some honey here. If you actually had a bigger piece of bread, you could even put a, a, a couple different kinds of fruit in there. Um, which I'm sure you could do anyway. Then I'm just taking some honey and I'm rubbing the honey on there just like that. This is going to help keep everything stuck together. And taste delicious. And so taste you really get your good. Sweet I fix love with honey that. and banana. I think it's like one of the best tastes together. And then we're going to take a little cinnamon and we're going to sprinkle some cinnamon. God bless you. In there. You yes. could even use cocoa powder. That's next. Again, this is all these Cacao. crazy. Yes, exactly. Cacao. Carob powder. You know, some you people go. can't That's have chocolate. Yeah. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to roll them up and just, and you can see the bread is holding together really Very well. Very nicely. It's so you just have like this little. It's like a banana cannoli. It's like a banana cannoli. Yes, exactly. That's TM, what I was trademark. thinking. Yeah, there you go. You got another 
another name for it. But I, I somehow think monkeys in a blanket. There's something about that name. It's I fun. I really like it. It's yeah, fun. kids will like that. Kids will like it. They will. Adults will like a banana. A banana cannoli. If you said that to a kid, they might just kind of look at you like perplexed. Uh, yes. That happened. I, I said cannoli to, to your son Patrick, yeah. and he, he had no he had idea. No idea. No. All if, right. you, if you say chocolate chip cookie, he'll get it. Cannoli, he won't. <laughs> but this this would actually be a good breakfast too. Yeah. So now what you're going to do is you've got your oven going to 400 degrees. And you're going to take these and you're going to put them on a baking sheet or in a baking dish. And you're just going to cover them with the rest of your melted oh. butter. And then what? Because of TV magic, we've got some already oh. made monkeys and a blanket. Make it's them out nice and toasty. And at warm. this point, what I would do is I would take them and I would put them on a plate. And for breakfast, you could totally pour pure maple syrup on them. Jesus. A little whipped cream. You could do chocolate syrup. You can do anything you want. So again, this is not just a snack. It can be a meal. And that's the monkey in a blanket. And let's see if they... Simple and delicious. Yeah, and you can cut one open and look at oh, that. Oh, it looks great inside. Yeah, and the banana actually bakes and gets a little hot. So Yum. when you eat them when they're right no, no, out of the no. oven. Kathy, yeah. thank you so much. This is really mm -hmm. good. I can tell Alana's ready to plot it. Alana's going to eat it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will have this recipe for you guys on our website, mymassfield.com. We're going to take these to go now. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kathy. Bye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Up ahead on Mass Appeal, whether you want to bond with a new pup or just strengthen the relationship you have with your dog right now, we have games and tricks you can play together at home. Dogs are obedient animals who love playing fetch or showcasing a new trick, especially if it promises a treat. Here to teach us a couple we can try at home is Marlene Lehman, owner of Walks and Wags Dog Training. Hello, Marlene. Hello, how are you? And hello to this little booger. Who is this guy? This is uh -oh. Jack. Oh, wow. Oh, he's so he's nice. He's a good boy. Kisses. Yeah, no, good no. boy, Jack. Why do I brush my teeth? I just have Jack right here to look at me. <laughs> so what kind of things are we showing Jack today? So I want to show two things. Um, one is just a great way to start to bond with your dog by noticing when he notices you. So I'm going to call Jack's name, and if he turns and checks in with me, he's going to get marked with a yes and follow with a little treat. So, so it's very basic, just to see if he knows basic. the name we gave yep. him. And what it does is it creates a really positive association with the dog's name. So um, it helps him to know that if he looks at me during distracting situations, that's a great thing, and he'll get a reward for that. So ready? Yes. Okay. 
Jack. So if Jack doesn't look, I'm going to make some noise. Oh, there we go. Yeah. He yes. Looks. Good job. I think he's he's concerned about what's going on outside over there. Yeah. Well, the so. problem is that you know yeah. our our studio has a giant kitchen. Absolutely. And dogs are Absolutely. always distracted by what could yes. be going on in there. So what I'm going to also do is I'm going to do something called notice me. So I'm going to notice when he notices me. Mark that with a little yes and drop him a treat on the floor. Jack. Yes. Good boy. Oh. And you always want to make the name super happy. Um, so the dog is apt to look. You know, sometimes we use our dog's name um, with things like no or stop. So the dog thinks, gee, every time I look, my name's a bad it's thing. It's something negative. Absolutely. Oh, so you want to oh. keep the name super positive. It keeps looking. Yeah. Like I could watch wiener dogs waddle all day. The so, way that they walk like this. Oh. So I'm going to mark with a Jack. Yes. I'm going to mark with a yes when he notices me. So great way to bond with your dog if your dog is new or even if you've had your dog for a while, um, just to get them to turn to you when you call their name. Eventually, what we start to get is that automatic check-in where Jack will look at me um, and ask me for, for direction or just check in with me to make sure everything's okay. So name is a great thing to do um, to condition your dog, even if they already know their name. Definitely. So once we feel... Jack has his name down. Where do we go from there? So I want to do something with Jack called hand targeting or touch. I'm going to get on the floor for this. Jack! And I want to get Jack's attention first. Um, he and smells if, kitchen. Yep, he does. So if I can't get his attention, I'm just going to take a little piece of food. I'm going to lure him back around to me. I'm going to give Jack the food on the floor because he's a little bit of a jumper. Yes. Okay, so, so you put your hand out and he booped it. Absolutely. Boop. Yep, okay. we want to boop. So I want to keep my hand level with my thigh. I want to get my big, yes, get my big bag of treats out of here. Um, and I'm going to mark with a yes every time he makes that contact with me. Yes, so, good job. So Jack's a pretty obedient dog. Yep. Um, but if you have one who has never done this before, how would you get him to boop? Would you? Yes. Um, exactly like this. So I would start super close to the dog because distance makes everything harder. Um, put your hand down level with your thigh, yes, and wait for your dog to tap it. Most dogs will naturally tap it because they're just curious. Um, yeah. So you make, it, you make it easy for them to do that, yes. Then we start to add a cue, um, which I'm going to call this touch. So I'm going to say touch when Jack makes contact with me. And I got to get the treats out of the way so he doesn't focus on those. Right. So every time he does it, you'll say touch, and then he'll associate uh, touch yes. with that movement. Yep. So we want to make the association with the action and the word touch. Yes. Good job. So now he knows, he's going to start to know that this is called touch. Touch. Yes. Um, and this is a great way to help dogs know that hands are not something to be afraid of. So they get really comfortable making that contact. For dogs who jump, it's a great way to keep them low, probably not as low as Jack, but pretty low. Um, and also a great way to reposition your dog when they're on leash or if you want to get your dog to come to you. Mm. Touch, yes. I want to try this. Would it work for okay. me or does I, he know you have the treats? No, I think it can work for you too. Here we go, Jack, um, so Jack, touch, touch. Oh, please, for the love of God, yes. Yes, good, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And then treat comes, oh, from, wow. treat comes treat. from you. Yeah, treat we want to. Yes. Yeah, oh, you're my star. Job. Yes. Good job, yes. Jack. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh. So, so now you guys will see that um, if Jack is a little distance away, we can call his name to get him to turn to us, say the word touch. He comes and makes contact with one of our palms. So we're going to, we'll put it together. So, Jack, touch. Yes, good job, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, wow. And, and with training, you want to make everything happy um, and rewarding for your dog. So they're apt to work with you on it um, and not let it be frustrating for the dog at all. It's a positive reinforcement a journey. Absolutely, it is. It is. Oh, um, look, do, do wiener dogs usually have a tail that long? I think they do, yeah. That is so cute. I've been he, trying to decide. Check this out, everyone. What's bigger, him or my shoe? Let's, let's decide. He's, he's definitely Could bigger. Could they be brothers? He's definitely bigger, okay. yeah. All right, well, now yeah. we know. Thanks, Marlene. You're welcome. Jack, you are an absolute stud, and I love you so much. Marlene, thank you. You're welcome. Jack, thank you even more. Yeah, Jack did a great job. Oh. Swimming is a great way to stay healthy no matter what age you are. Here to dive in and tell us everything we need to know is Lloyd Zeal of the American Red Cross. Hi, Lloyd. Hey, how are you? Great. 
Now, when I think of the American Red Cross, I immediately think of swimming and safety. Good, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's important, you know. Um, uh, the Red Cross uh, continually looks at our curriculum and readdresses it every five years to make sure that the science and the skills are the things that people need to be able to take care of their families and uh, have a good time while they're at the beach or in the pool. Let's talk about swimming first. Swimming is a great thing that you can do no matter what age you are. What, uh, how do you recommend people begin teaching their children how to swim? What age should they get them in the pool or? You know, pool, uh, swimming instruction is becoming better and better and better, and people are getting their kids into the pool sooner. Uh, toddlers, babies are getting in, learning how to sw uh, learning how to float. It's important that the that everybody has skills, from babies all the way to people my age or beyond, because you want to be able to uh, respond if you find yourself in a situation. Um, we don't want to always talk about being fearful of water, but it certainly is a greater peace of mind if you know what to do. Definitely. What about floaties? Do you recommend floaties for I don't go anywhere ones? without them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, any any layer of protection that you can put uh, between a uh, swimmer and the water is certainly helpful. Uh, but again, it's the skills. Knowing knowing the skills uh, that uh, can keep you water competent, um, how to float, how to turn yourself around, how to just find the surface, you know, it's it, th those are important skills for for anybody to be able to know. Should people be intimidated if they don't know how to swim? Should they, can they just start and learn these skills no matter what age you are? You know, nobody wants to be afraid of the water, especially where we are in New England. There's rivers and streams and the ocean and pools. And, and even more so now, there's pools at hotels and water parks that are indoors. So this is something that happens all year long that people are near water. It's just important to make sure that somebody's got eyes on people um, if you're not a strong swimmer, to go with somebody as, as an adult. If, uh, if you and I aren't a strong swimmer, we shouldn't go to a lake by ourselves, you know, because you may need help. So just basic uh, things to remember to make sure that, uh, that you're keeping yourself as safe as you can. What about first aid? Um, if somebody is in trouble at a pool, what's the first thing that you recommend they do? So somebody needs to call 911. Somebody needs to get uh, the professionals on their way. Um, but again, having that instruction on how to do first aid and CPR specifically, you'll know what to do to throw something to the person that's in the water. You don't want to endanger yourself to try to save them from choppy water or water that you don't know what's in it. Um, you know, so there, there are any number of dangers that are around water. So you want to throw something to them or pull them or in some way. Don't put yourself in danger. If they're not responsive, um, starting CPR, making sure that they're getting uh, rescue breaths. And if they need it, if, they, if you find out that their heart isn't functioning, they need to start getting compressions. And the American Red Cross gives lessons in CPR and... Um CPR and first aid, first aid, and as well as aquatics lessons. A lot of city pools around our state teach uh, Red Cross curriculum that uh, enables lifeguards to be able to respond and uh, enables families. You know, just think of the peace of mind when you go someplace, whether it's the beach or, or to a hotel pool or any place, that you know that you don't have to worry about your kids. You, don't, you know you don't have to worry about your family members, your husband or wife or, or, or your grandparents, because you know that they've got a certain amount of water safety knowledge. That they're that they're going to be able to keep themselves safe. That's perfect. And you had just mentioned earlier that it's usually not somebody with a badge that saves you, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, we, uh, I always say the per the person that's most likely to save your life probably won't be wearing a badge. It'll probably be somebody you know. It's going to be your family, yeah. your friend, or someone. Thank you, Lloyd. Absolutely. Don't forget to see all the details on this sto story. Visit our website, mymessappeal.com. We are back in the studio to learn some booty building exercises to get those glutes in great shape when Mass Appeal returns.
I have been taken hostage. I don't know why yet, but I had something to do with a glute workout. We have Elizabeth Lennart here from Studio E. Uh, Elizabeth, why have you strapped my legs together? Well, first, we had to take you hostage. Second, yes, <laughs> second. as all days end. Yeah, our plan today is booty work that you can do um, at home with little equipment that's super portable or no equipment at all. So the first thing we have right now, you're banded up. This is a loop band. And all I need you to do is squat in place. Uh, and what does the band add to this squat? A little bit of resistance. But we're going to change the range of motion on the squat. So we're going to come down, come up halfway, mm -hmm. come down, and come all the way up. We'll try that again. All the way down, we'll come up just halfway, down, oh. and we'll hit that baby one more time. Why do you want, what does the halfway thing add? Time under tension, keeping you in a deeper drop in the bucket, more gluteal engagement. On Bigger the drop in the bucket. Bigger drop in the bucket. The butt is the boss all the way down. So if we want to add a little bit of plyometric work, now we're going to add a pop squat. So, so you're going down on the, when you go in, too? You're yes. So out down and, in, and down. Out. Okay. Good. Out, in. Ooh. See if we can do another four. Keep coming with Oh, you. you want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah I'd love not? for you to keep coming with me. <laughs> down and up. Nice. All right. So next. Oh, we can take this off? We're going to take it off. That wasn't so bad. Sure. Okay. No, it was fun. Next thing to think about when you're training your glutes, you want to hit your glutes from all different angles. So we'll plant the left leg, side lunge. Oh, I'm a big side lunge guy. Big side lunge fam, let's go for it. Lunge all the way down. We can increase range of motion and start to add our arms into it. Bam. And without equipment, a knee lift is going to add just a little bit more intensity. Oh, a little knee lift? Yeah. I just like this because it goes well with the music. Oh, it does. Kind of it like does. Foot loose. It does. Take it to the other side. Side lunge. If you need to support your back, hands going to be to the quad. You can take it all the way down to the floor. Reach it up. Knee comes up. I'm just going with the music. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Let's take a look at the gliding disc. Oh, these add so much range of motion. They add range of motion. They're real. Oh, perfect time. Hey, Lana. I want to try a disc. You want one? Perfect okay, sure. timing. Come on in. So gliding discs are fantastic because what they do is they take away any impact. There's no jarring, but they add time under tension. So when we normally step back into a lunge, we get to release the muscle. This doesn't allow that. Ah. Plant the left. We'll curtsy lunge down. Whoa. And come all oh, the wow. way back up. So now we're hitting the glutes from all different angles. You could totally do this at home without the disc, but it does add a little bit of fun. It now, is. if we hold down in a deep, safe range of motion, we can slide the leg out and Ooh. come back in. But we want to stay as low as we safely can without compromising the knee, but really letting that glute get lit. Cool. Bring it back in. I'm going to take it to the other side. You can really feel it when you keep that, oh, knee, for sure. that knee bent constantly. Yes. That's the... Well, butt is the bus. You've got to have a nice, deep range of motion. So we want to come all the way up, come all the way down, and we could stay down here. Let's try something different. Instead of letting the leg slide, we're just going to pull the disc in like a little an pulse. inch or two. Not a pulse, but it's a micro movement, just ah. about an inch up and down. We'll try another four. Good. A micro Three. movement. It's a little micro movement. Oh, boy. Release. How'd that feel? Good. Okay. I can feel it. Do you want to try another one? Of course. Yes. All right. So, next one. It's called the ski slope lunge, otherwise known as a Brazilian lunge. In this lunge, we'll angle slightly to the side. We'll go this way. Back leg stays long. We're going to shift our visual focus towards the big toe. So, instead of looking forward, we're going to look slightly downward, keeping the back leg long. So, let's extend back. Go ahead and hold down there. Cool. All right. From here, with the back leg long, we're going to drive up from the front heel, come up, and press all the way down. You should be feeling that in the glute of the front leg. Yes? Oh, absolutely. OK, so yep. hang down here. And now we'll elevate the heart rate, pump the back knee in, Whew. get the arms driving in, and get a really great glute burn. So you could take all the exercises that we did, and you could put them together into a circuit, maybe 30 seconds of each. Take some time off. So it's more about Hit time than reps. You could do it either way. OK. You could definitely do it either way. I guess with plyometrics, it's kind of a little more cardio, and then time it kind of makes sense sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I'm all for the cardio. If you're looking for good booty results, how often 
Once a week, twice a week, you should try and aim it's for good it. Good question. The, what do I need for my butt? In tandem, so if you're doing circuit training, right, like full body circuit training, you can hit those glutes every day. None of these things are heavy load, so we're not doing a heavy back squat or front squat, anything like that. So you could do this often. You could definitely do this really often, more than two or three times a week if you wanted to. You can kind of sprinkle that in for maybe, we were here doing less than five minutes, so you could do that for sure. Okay. The great finisher at the end of a cardio workout too. Definitely. <laughs> thank you so much, Elizabeth. <laughs> also, thank you to our friends for watching the show today. We appreciate all those flowers, though. Grocery Flores always hooks us up Gorgeous. every week. And don't forget, if you missed anything from today's show, you can watch again 1 p.m. on the CW Springfield. We appreciate you watching, guys. And uh, good luck with your gluteus. Glutes? Glutes. 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 Great yep. glutes. With your Booty, glutes. Booty, booty. Huh? Yep. Go straight back. Oh, <laughs> yeah.